<laughs> yeah, man. You one of the elders. That's why it's a blessing to have you read when you want to read or you can. I can if you want me to. Let's get some of that wisdom about you. We're going to read... Um, I think it's 68, is it? It is. I'm going to read Psalm 68 to start this off. Okay. Let Elohim arise, let his enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate him flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melted before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of Elohim. The wicked has no chance. I, I, you know, that's something we have to remember. The enemies, they will be scattered. They flee before Yah. There is no, you know, we live on a planet where uh, they think, and even going back to Nimrod in the Tower of Babel, wickedness thinks it wants to stand in front of Yah and war with Yah, but it really does not. Verse three. But let the righteous be glad. Let them rejoice before Elohim. Yea, let the exceeding let them exceedingly rejoice. Sing unto Yah. Sing praises to his name. Extol him that rideth upon the heavens by his name, Yah. And rejoice before him. And you see, uh, even as we were just listening to that Lauren Hill, and I know the Jamaicans, at least the Rastas, I think all of them possibly, they'll still say Ja. They probably got that from right there. Um, um, but we see in the definition, in the Masoretic text where they translated this from, they knew what it was. Right. Yo, hey, verse five. Uh, a father of the father villas and a judge of the widows is Elohim in his holy habitation. A defender of the widows, a father for the fatherless. And you think we grow up in a time now with jail and drugs and even death. A lot of us grew up fatherless. And it, it does have an effect, I, especially being in the house with Ariel every day. I know that having both parents in the house and they're on the same page has an effect understanding that I know some people who grew up with both parents in the house and they still tell you today one of them wasn't there. So on the same page and actively doing this, but be that as it may, we can always find comfort in knowing that even when there was no father there, our heavenly father has always been there. Verse six. Elohim setteth the solitary in families, he bringeth out those which are bound with chains, but the rebellious dwell in a dry land. In a dry land. And I know yesterday we were talking about, um, it says, uh, Sakia, here, but, and it says a parched reason, that is a desert, but that's also similar to the definition for sometimes when you see the word wilderness too in scripture but verse seven. Oh yeah when thou wentest forth before my, thy people when thou didst march uh through the wilderness shall I the earth shook the heavens also dropped at the presence of Elohim even Sinai itself was moved at the uh, presence of Elohim the Yah of Israel. And when the Most High in the eight, as we see, when, when Yah goes forth before his people, the earth will shake, the heavens will drop at the presence of the Most High Yah. And we have to remember that as we are his people and we are relearning what it means to be his people. Um, we have to have faith in knowing that as hard as that makes us kind of believe, you know, it's almost like a sci-fi movie, but we have to know that that is true, and that applies to us. That applies to you individually. If you have to go somewhere and stand alone, know that 
pray and ask your Elohim to go forth before you and the earth will shake, whether spiritually, physically, or however it needs to. Verse 9. O thou Elohim didst send a plentiful rain, whereby thou didst confirm thy inheritance when it was weary. Thy congregation hath dwelt therein. Thou, O Yah, hast prepared of thy goodness for the poor. Yah gave the word. Great was the company of those that published it. What are we doing? What, are he, we, what have we been called to do? Yah has given each and every one of you a word, and that word is different for all of you. And when I say it's different, it's the same Torah, it's the same instructions, but he has given you this part. He has given me this part. He has given her this part. And great is the company of those that publish it. Everybody, and even when you read the, 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 the prophets, every prophet doesn't tell the same prophecy. Some spoke of going into Babylon. John spoke of the revelation at the end. Um, there's duality with a lot of prophecies to where they're all speaking to the same thing. But each prophet had a piece for the most part. Each prophet only had a piece. But great is the company of those that publish it. And we have to remember that as well. We ain't been called here for nothing. There is a job to be done. You see the ignorance upon our people. You see the darkness upon our people. We don't have to be everywhere in all things, but be on point with one thing. And if you just pass that one thing on, I believe we part of the company that was great that published it. Verse 12. Kings of armies did flee a place, and she that tarried at home divided the spoil. Though the ye, though ye have uh, lain among the pots, yet still ye be as the wings of a dove covered with silver, and her feathers with yellow gold. When the Almighty scatters kings in it, it was white as snow in Solomon. That scripture right there, when the Almighty scattered kings in it, it was white as snow in Simon or, uh, or Solomon. Um, for some reason, I just always felt like that was talking about, if you know the story of Enoch, when Enoch was translated, all of these kings and these people were following with him. And he said, y'all said, I need to go three days out or whatnot. He gonna come get me and all these people were with him. Some of them kings were like, we don't want to leave. And it said that when he left, he was gone and it was snow. And they these people broke through all this snow and couldn't find the bodies of those that were with him. Um, that's just a side note. I've always, that for some reason, that scripture to me has always reminded me of that scene from the translation of Enoch. But verse 15. Uh, the hill of Elohim is as the hill of Basan, and high hill as the hill of Bashan. Don't let, hey, in the hill, we know that Bashan is where all of them was at. It was giants there. It was a lot of wickedness going on in Bashan. The hill of Yah is higher than that. Don't, 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 and, and, and you know, this is kind of my opinion right there on that scripture, but don't, we can't let, because even in the world today, when you look at the different things going on, wickedness to somebody who ain't paying attention, it might look high and mighty. Um, it looks it looks smart. You know, they going into the heavens. We on planets. Wickedness just looks like it it it'll never lose. And remember that the hill of Elohim is higher than the wheel than the hill of Bashan. Verse sixteen. Why leap ye ye high hills? This is the hill which. Elohim desire to dwell in, yea, Yah will dwell in it forever. The chariots of Elohim are 20,000, even thousands of angels. The uh, uh, Yah is among them, as in Sinai, in the holy place. Chariots of Elohim are 20,000. Don't let nobody tell you because Revelation say that. 200 angels fell with the dragon or whatnot. I, I think that's in Revelation, or it says he took a third of the angels. So 
Okay. I know it's somewhere else where it talks about 200 angels because a lot of people always try to liken that third to 200. Now, I said it chariots of Yah, 20,000 that's coming back with him. That don't mean this is every angel. So always remember when it talks about that dragon falling in Revelation and it takes a third of the angels, even if it's 20,000, a third is like six and a half thousand. Don't, don't, don't get caught up into, and it's more than that. I believe that there is million, possibly billions of angels. So don't, don't, don't get caught up into the number game when they come to the angels. They are, I, one thing I know for sure is more than 600. <laughs> I don't know where I get that from, but you'll hear people a lot of times talk about, if it was 200 angels, Phil, no, nah, it was a lot more than that. A third? <laughs> no, nah, a third might have been 20 million angels, Phil, with him. You just never know. Verse okay. 18. Thou hast ascended on high. Thou hast led captivity captive. Though has thou hast received gifts for men, yea, for the rebellious also, that Yah Elohim might dwell among them. And that's prophecy. We've seen that. Hamashiach did three days, three nights in the belly of the earth. It said that the, the graves were open and the, the earth shook and the dead rose. And when he ascended on high, he took them with him. He led captivity captive, those that was prisoners of darkness. And he received gifts for men. The gift was the men that he took to paradise. The rebellious also, it was a thief with him on the on the tree who repented in his last breaths. You know what? I know you, him. I know I'm foul. I know you not. Take me into your kingdom with you this day. And he said, I'm going to meet you there. That's a prophecy there. Verse 19. Blessed be Yah, who daily loadeth us uh, with be benefits, even the Elohim of our salvation, shall I. He that is our Elohim is the Elohim of salvation. And unto Yah Yahweh, the Elohim belongs the issues from death. Not the victory. I used to be when you died, we was letting these fallen angels and, and, and every, I don't even believe that every angel that's over the coordination of which she old was and death were a fallen angel. Some of them were appointed by Yada to oversee them. Well, when my son died and we took back that, we got the victory as the scriptures say from death. I took that from them. And now the righteous go and rest as Paul says in second Corinthians chapter 12 in the third level of heaven. The righteous go and rest in paradise. Ain't no more Abraham's bosom where you down in darkness as well and you hearing screams of people being tormented, but you not being tormented. No, we're going we gonna to take back the issue from death. You, 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 you no longer have that. I'm no longer allowing Hasatan and Abaddon, which is the angel that's raised from the pit in Revelation when the angel comes down into the desert with the key and opens the door. I'm no longer letting them have control over the dead. I'm taking that back. They abuse that power. <laughs> Verse 21. But Elohim shall wound the head of his enemies and the hairy scalp of such as one that as goeth on still in his trespasses. The son of man. He going to bruise his heel. But he going to bruise the head. Verse 22. Yahweh, Yahweh said, I will bring again from uh, Bashan. I will bring my people again from the death of the sea. I always think about slavery when I think about that. And you hear all the stories of all the slaves in the transatlantic slave trade who was like, I'm not going over to serve these people. And they were so serious about it, they jumped into the ocean. I'm gonna bring them back. Sure do. I'm gonna have to stand in front of them. Verse 23. That thy foot may be dipped in the blood of thine enemies and the tongue of, the, of thy dogs in the same. And Jezebel get ate up by dogs. She was yeah. out killing prophets. Yeah, I ain't playing. Verse 24. And they have seen thy goings, O Elohim, even the goings of my Elohim, my king, 
in the sanctuary. Hey, I'm the king, but you the king. Verse 25. The singers went before, the players on instruments followed after. Among them were the damsels playing with tambourines. Bless ye Elohim in the congregations, even Yah from the fountains of Israel. There is little Benjamin with their ruler, the uh, Prince Yehuda, and their council, the princes of Zebulon and the prince of Naphtali. Now Elohim has commanded thy strength, strengthen, O Elohim, that which thou hast wrought for us. Because the temple of Jerusalem shall kings uh, bring presents unto thee. Rebuke the company of spearmen, the multitude of the bulls, with the calves of the people, till everyone submit himself with pieces of silver. Scatter thou the people that delight in war. Scatter. Rebuke the company of the spearmen, the multitude of bulls with the calves of the people, till everyone submit himself with pieces of silver. Scatter thou the people that delight in war. You know why that's so interesting? Because we we live now in a time where at least the 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 uh what they would call it, the civilized, the modern, the industrial nations of this world, they all delight in war. And they can't win. Yes. It's gonna scatter these folks with their nukes. You know, you hear that on TV all the time. These people got nukes. Oh, he's gonna use a nuke. Don't do this, a nuke, a nuke. And yeah, it's like I don't care nothing about them nukes thing. I'm going to have them people on the run so bad they ain't even going to be able to push a button. Think about being on the run so bad that you can't do something as simple as push a button. Verse 31. Uh, princes shall come out of Egypt. Ethiopia shall soon stretch out her hands unto Elohim. The princes going to come out of Egypt. Egypt, Mitzrayim, bondage. Ethiopia shall soon stretch out our hands unto Elohim. Cush, Ethiopia, I'm sure this means Cush. It does, which is the son of Ham. It ain't necessarily talking about where we know Ethiopia to be today. Neither is it talking about where we know Egypt to be today. Although Israel, I believe, is in both of those. I know for a fact Israel is in both of those spots because I know Israelites from here who have moved to Ethiopia and to Egypt. <laughs> So I do know at least there's some awakened Israelites there. If it ain't nothing but some folks I know who moved from here to from America to I know somebody in both of them places. But it don't necessarily ain't just talking about some landmass here. We got to get that out of our head too. Now Egypt is a house of bondage. Ethiopia is Cush, a son of Ham, and his territory, which Cush's territory, if you look historically, was more than where Ethiopia is today. It was Saudi Arabia. It was Yemen where they got Yemen at today, another war-torn place. I'm going to bring Israel from a lot of different spots, y'all saying right here. Verse 32, which, and, and, and once again, for King David to be the one saying this, don't let that fall short on you. King David is the king and the world bows to him. They, these people so scared of King David. <laughs> they scared of Benny I and Uri I and all of them mighty men that King David had with him. King David had the mightiest army that ever lived. When you go back and read the story and it details the mighty men, they call them lion-like men that David had with him. Joab and them, King David told them like, you know what? I really want some of that water from that spring down in such and such. It's the best water in the world. It was Joab and two other mighty men when it took a city. <laughs> Just for David to get a cup of water. <laughs> and for him to be saying, Prince is going to come back out of Egypt and Ethiopia going to stretch. That's saying a lot for somebody as mighty as King David to be acknowledging or y'all using him to prophesy, y'all are going to be spread around. Verse 32. Sing unto Elohim the kingdoms of the earth. Sing, O praises unto Yah Shalah. To him that rideth upon the heavens of heavens, which were of old, lo, he doth send out his voice 
and that a mighty and that a mighty voice sent out his voice. What he sent out, he sent out the word, and the word is for surely mighty. Verse 34. Ascribe ye strength unto Elohim, his excellency is over Israel, and his strength is in the clouds. Excellency is over Israel. Gava, his majesty, it says his arrogance, but we know y'all not to be here. That must be another meaning of the word. His majesty is over him. His highness, his pride, what he enjoys, what he is proud of is a righteous Israel fulfilling the covenant and being what they've been called to be. Verse 35. O Elohim, thou art terrible out of a holy places, out of, the, out of thy holy places. The Elohim of Israel is he that giveth strength and power unto his people. Blessed be Elohim. O oh, Elohim, thou art terrible. The word for terrible is your rod. Thou art revered. Thou art feared. Thou art reverenced out of thy holy places. The Elohim of Yasharal is he that gives strength and power unto his people. And it's too many of us now to think. We just going to buy back the block. <laughs> that's what black folks think now, man. We need ownership. We need reparations. And we going to buy businesses and that's going to be what save us. But that comes from being in ignorant and not knowing who we are. No, it is he that gives strength and power unto his people. Not a religion, not a doctrine, not a foreign nation, not a heathen Gentile. Not science, not medicine, not sports, not entertainment, not rap, not higher education. Some of these things are all right, but these are things that we worship now. We think that we have something because we have those. No. It is he that gives strength and power unto his people. And then this ends with, blessed be Yah. Baruch Yahuwah, I believe it's blessed as Baruch or Barak. I know people say it differently. Barak Abba Yah, because he gives strength and power unto his people. And coming from David, that ain't nothing to poo-poo at either, considering, like I said, David told some folks, <laughs> David told three men, that water is really good. <laughs> And they went and took a city for David to get a bottle of water. That is not to be poo-pooed. And David said, it is he who gave us this strength and this power. And remember, it is he who gave it to us. Even if you feel powerless, you aren't. Hallelujah. Thank you for the read, Nobadiah. Hallelujah. As we humble our hearts and our minds and we go into prayer to start off today, I'll be y'all. We thank you for blessing us to see another day. We thank you for blessing us for a Shabbat and another successful week. We ask that you rejuvenate us. You allow us this day of rest and worship if no other day to get our minds right, to get us spiritually prepared for all and anything that may be coming in front of us and that you strengthen our faith in knowing that you have already closed the doors and you have already straightened out all paths that need to be straightened out. We pray, to, we pray today, Abba Yah, that your word is increased and that and, and, and that us as men and women decrease, Abba Yah, and that today, that no matter what happens, that we leave here today with uh, a, a seed, a nugget, um, and some comfort from you that we use today to grow closer to you. We use every day, but we use the reading today to, cl to grow closer to you, to be more confident in you, to put more of our understanding upon you to put our power in your hands, understanding that you are the one truly that gives us power. You are the one that has allowed us this opportunity in a, in a land that, or a wilderness that is a desolate place or a dry place or a dark place. You have shined a light on us in the midst of this darkness. I pray for Ag Mike and Akoti Ebony Abiyah that you continue to strengthen their bodies, their hearts, 
their spiritual being, Abiyah, their soul, that any illness that may be upon them, Abiyah, that you, as only you know, will fill their, power, that fill their bodies with your powers of healing, Abiyah, that you continue to bring shalom upon their house and you continue to put them in the, might, in the right mind frame to go out and do the work. Um, you bring all things from your Ruach HaKodesh into remembrance, Abiyah. I pray for Chuck and Mitch, Abiyah, as she said earlier, they getting old. We know that nothing is old when it comes to you. I pray that you continue to strengthen their bodies to go out and be the servants of the community that they have been. I pray that in all of your power and all of your glory, you continue to let your, your light shine up on their household so that understanding can come about so that they can fully understand their purpose and their place in all of this, Abiyah, and that the truth, no matter what it may be, will be founded in their household always to go out and be the wonderful children of Zion that they have always been. I pray for everybody else on the call who may be battling anything, struggling anything. We thank you for strengthening Ike Daniel's knee. We pray for Heidi and we continue to pray for her and her child and all of the people with young children on here, all of the elders on here, which are the parents of us. We thank you for them and for guiding them and everything that got us to this point. Good or bad, everything has played a part in, it, in us coming to this moment. And I pray that you just have mercy on the house of Yasharal, as Paul said. I pray all day long that all of Israel that may be saved. And we understand that he also said all of Israel won't be saved. But we thank you for those whom you choose to save, knowing that you will forgive whom you choose to forgive and you will write out of the book whom you choose to write out. Let your word be true. In the name of Yahushua HaMashiach, we pray all things. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Shabbat shalom, everyone. Well said, Andre. Hallelujah. We can come a long way with Shaul. I still don't know if I'm reading. I still don't know if I'm going to read um, Acts chapter 29 out of the sea. I got to read this this week. I've been telling myself I'm going to read. <laughs> I don't know. We may move forward. As we see already, Shaul's going to depart from Rome. <laughs> Hey, Acts chapter 29 in the sea for Shaul going to depart from Rome. He doesn't die in Rome in Acts chapter 28, though. It doesn't end with him dying there, but he is there. Say so he went all the way to Britain. I think about it. We're going to pray about it, I should say. I ain't nothing to think about. We're going to pray about it. Last week, we ended with Shaul. He finally left to go to Rome. He'd have been through a lot. It was a demon out on this water trying to make him die because it knew that Hamashiach told him, don't worry about nothing. You're going to make it to Rome. And the storm was trying to kill him to make the, it wasn't about him physically. It was about, it's not about you physically. And that's what we was on last week. It's not about us. These, these, these powers and principalities of darkness, these strongholds, these demons, these fallen angels, these whatever else made them the roles. With all of this wickedness that went on on this planet, it is not about us physically. It is trying to get the word of Yah to be untrue. That is what the devil's trying to take to his own judgment. The word of Yah was not true. You said this, you said that, and I proved that that wasn't true. You know why? Because I did sit my throne in the clouds. I set it higher than you. This whole planet worshiped me. But Yah, just like he told Elijah with Jezebel, I got 7,000 of y'all that's around. He don't even know it. That has not bowed to need a ball. Oh, the word going to be true. This demon was trying to kill Shaul. And then Hamashiach appeared to him on the water. Same way he appeared to Kepha. Be of good cheer. And we've seen that so many times. The tools they read, we've seen them say it again. We didn't seen him say be of good cheer quite a few times now. Y'all be of good cheer. The storm will pass. The ship might wreck. But you and everybody on it with you going to be okay. Don't ever, don't ever forget what your presence is doing, what your prayers are doing, what your very being. Mama Speed, you just being in that office. You don't even know who you sparing judgment. Just by being there. 
no matter how they acting. <laughs> and you dealing with Yasharal. <laughs> you don't even know who all your presence is spared in there. Don't you ever forget that. None of y'all, wherever you at, the grocery store, wherever you at, your presence is possibly sparing somebody. Just like Shaul's presence was sparing. This boat full of heathens, a bunch of Romans. I mean, and I, I know I kind of laughed last week because somebody, I'm sure it's somebody somewhere that'll try to make the argument that these Roman soldiers was really all Israel. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know, man. I don't know, man. On one breath, Israel is servants and struggling and this and that. And then on the other breath, we, we running everything. God, okay. Okay. Y'all presence is a blessing. The storm will pass. And at the end of this, we seen, and they have been out here on this water now for at least two weeks. They said it was two weeks at a time, but they have been out here extra days. They might have been out here on the water for a month. Porting in different little spots, riding along these coasts, uh, water spouts, as we showed last week, everywhere, which is like the tornado on waters, which have always kind of been a little terrifying to me, Father. Forgive me for that, but it's just beyond me. But the ship finally wrecked. The storm was over, and they was happy, like, man, they still want to kill Shaul, but the head centurion was like, no, dude, he the reason we here, which is funny. A Roman. It's a lot of Romans in this story as Israel is constantly like, kill him and do this and do that. And we don't feel that. It's a lot of Romans in this story who constantly like, y'all tripping. He ain't really did no wrong. The ship wrecked. The storm is over. But don't you ever forget. You might be out the storm. But the battle is always on. This is where we at. They made it here, and we was off over here somewhere last week when they left. It was an island somewhere. What was this island at? Let me get the look crazy. Was it over here? Yes, Crete. So that's where they coming from. So now we see. They made it all the way over here. They still ain't in Rome, which is up here. But this is where they crashed at, right here, Malta. Just because the storm over don't mean it's just over with. Y'all got to be faithful. Y'all's like, y'all got to be faithful. I know it's hectic. Y'all don't know what to do. Kamala, is she black? Donald Trump. It's a race war coming. It's hectic. It seems hectic. It really do. We don't know what this going to do. We don't know what this election going to do. It's all kind of strife amongst our people about some of the pettiest things, too. It's a lot of strife. It is a lot of strife amongst our people in a, in a multitude of ways. We don't know what's next, the storm. And this next chapter is about through the storm and all of that. Got to stay faithful. Acts chapter 28, verse 1. And when they were escaped, the storm, Amashiach got them through. It was something on that water trying to kill them. It was really trying to kill Paul, but it had killed all them Romans too, just because. Then they knew that the island was called, it says Melita here, but it's really Malta. And the barbarous people, who is these folks here? It says foreigners. The word here for barbarous is just foreigners. And these foreigners that's here, right, what did they do? They showed us no little kindness. Ain't that something? These foreigners, these barbarous people, it says here, which really means foreigner in the Greek as they, as they trying to present it to us, showed us no little kindness. Ain't that something how we know that these this, these letters would have been written in Hebrew because they were written to Israelites. And I don't know if everyone was written in Hebrew either. Let me say that because in Corinth, them Israelites up there might have been speaking Greek. 
And Shaul, knowing Greek, might have wrote a letter up there in Greek for them. But like when you read like Romans and Hebrews and no, they was right. He was writing them in Hebrew. When you read the Acts, for sure, was written in Hebrew. Um, and even when you go through the Acts, like when he was in Ephesus, I'm assuming he probably wrote that to them. The the Israelites in in F in Ephesus or Ephesia, I'm not sure how I'm supposed to say that in Hebrew. But even in the Greek, and this is why we got to trust y'all because as he's been inspiring us, as he's given us so much, right? As he's continuing to. Because what he's really doing is he's 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 remaking. Literally, he's remaking us all. Um, even in the Greek with them trying to hide it, they can't hide it. That's from the Most High Yah. And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire and received us, everyone, because of the present rain and because of the cold. So right out of the storm, when everybody thought they was about to die, after Shaul told them, don't go out on that water. And they said the captain of the ship was like, you don't sail. We always out on this water, man. This little storm will pass. It ain't nothing. He was like, we going to die. <laughs> Shaul's like, look, somebody going to die. But mind you, Shaul know that Hamashiach has already told him he going to make it to Rome. And he faithful. So Shaul like, y'all might die. I'm going to make it to Rome. I'm looking out for you. And then Hamashiach come tell him, not only is you not going to die, ain't nobody going to die. Everybody going to be good. But the ship did wreck. And right after the wreck, right after the storm, the same storm that we all in, you came into the word of Yah now, you feel like the spiritual attacks have picked up, different things is trying to pull you here, pull you there, certain temptations is trying to, things that you thought you'd have beat back is trying to creep back and open up the door. And whether it be the lust of a woman or for a woman, the lust of a man or even if it just is something as simple as the lust of money or or a, 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 a certain kind of attitude that ain't, ain't, ain't what y'all gave us or it could be anything. It's trying to creep back up. But y'all didn't help you beat the storm. And right after he beat the storm, he confirmed that he was with you by doing what? making some foreigners who they call barbarous people to show y'all all of the kindness. Why? Because it was rain and it was cold and they was just on their shore watching y'all shipwreck and they know you ain't got nothing because you done threw everything off the ship already trying to lighten this load to make it to where you was going. And y'all is making a way. And y'all is making a way. This scripture right here reminds me of be mindful when dealing with a stranger because you may be dealing with an angel unaware. Because they could have been like, who is you people and, and whatever. But Yah's making the way. Verse three, for Shaul, first and foremost, but for all of these non-believers more than likely that's around him, these Roman soldiers, because you are with Shaul. And when, and when Shaul had gathered a bundle of sticks, and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand, the viper. In the Greek, it tells us this viper is an adder or other poisonous snake. This adder came about a fire, a small venom, venomous Eurasian snake that has a dark zigzag pattern on his back and bears live young. Not sure what that meant, also called a viper. I thought something right here, right? Even though the storm is past, the serpent still lurking. As Shaul had gathered these sticks, the serpent was still lurking, laying in the fire. He laying in the fire. As we getting tried by fire, this serpent is laying right around this fire. <laughs> He waiting for you to stick your head out and he's going to try to latch on to it. A venomous stake. The word of Elohim came again unto me saying, Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 15. Verse 16, moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write up on it. For Yehuda, 
and for the children of Yasharal, his companions. Then take another stick and write up on it for yourself, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions, and join them one to another in the one stick, and they shall become one in thine hand. I read that because as I was reading this, I realized something. Shaul had gathered a bundle of sticks on his way to speak the word of Hamashiach, the truth to the Israelites that was in Rome. We are here gathering the sticks. We don't know who, just because of a person being quote unquote black, we don't know exactly who got off the slave ships. It could be tribe of Yehuda, some tribe of Benjamin. I, I'm going to go out on limb and say it's somebody from a multitude of tribes who got off them slave ships right there with us. And all we see is black folks. That's all we ever know. They went to the same slavery you did. And now we out here trying to gather these sticks. Shaul was trying to gather. He had gathered a bundle of sticks. He had got a bunch of Israelites from all tribes to believe. And when he laid it on the fire to be tried by fire, because we really pure gold, as it say in Lamentation, you got to lay gold on fire to clean it properly. You could take your gold to the jeweler and there make it shine, but to truly clean gold, you got to set it on fire. That's how you get all the impurities up off of it. And as Shaul had gathered these sticks representing Israel and he laid them on the fire, it was a viper right there in the heat that tried to kill him. As you all are going out and trying to gather these sticks and what you're doing when you gather these sticks is you're leading them to this fire because Yah's a consuming fire and everybody who comes into the truth, we have to stand in front of this fire. That's the only way for him to cleanse us and to make pure gold. It's a viper out there trying to fasten on our hand too. Because the serpent is trying to attack the gatherer of the sticks. The serpent is always going to try to attack the one who is trying to gather Yah's people in whatever capacity, even if it's just in the house with you and your children and, and, and your mother, your father, your husband, your wife. It ain't got to be. Uh, um, we ain't got to be standing in front of no congregation of thousands and millions. And, and it could just be you and your household. And the gatherer sticks. The serpent is trying to stop the gathering of the sticks. And this is after the storm. Y'all already done brought you through the storm with a demon trying to kill you because he don't want he don't want the word of y'all to be true. Agdidimus. From what I understand, hand, you know, represent ministry. Oh, and of God. course, we know the serpent represents deception. Mm -hmm. So that's what this is supposed to be about, a deceiving ministry. Mm -hmm. Now, Paul wasn't going to deceive anybody, but the serpent was trying to attach himself to Paul mm -hmm. to cause him to give a deceiving ministry. Hallelujah. You too? Oh, I didn't know you finished, Doc. Okay. The serpent is always lurking, even after the storm. This is why we got to stay faithful. Verse four. And when the barbarians, the foreigners, saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, no doubt. It ain't no doubt. This man is a murderer. <laughs> Yo, that was funny. Who, though he have escaped the sea, we just watched that storm do y'all ship in it. We are, we still amazed that all y'all survived that. We seen you crash. We seen y'all, it said, whoever could swim, swim to the coast. Whoever can't, get on these, uh, um, the boards of the ship, get to the coast. We seen it. Even though you escaped the sea, vengeance suffer not to live. These folks is like, Mind you, this day island, they see this snake. They know. They done seen people get bit with this snake and you die. Verse 5, and he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. Howbeit they looked when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly. But after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, 
They changed their minds and said that he was a god. Well, word, well, it'll be in the Greek. But the point being, they done seen this snake attack some folks. And immediately, suddenly, people fall down, die, swell up. They done seen this take a, this snake attack some folks. That's why they like, dang. He went through all that. We watched them go through all that with that with the ship getting broke up like that to get over here. And as soon as they get here, while he's putting a bundle of sticks on the fire, this viper come out of the fire and kill him. Which that, I don't know no snake that live in fire. Even that to me is kind of like, wow, right? But he felt no harm. He felt no harm, even though he was supposed to die. And the reason why he didn't die and the reason why we got to stay on point, even after this storm, knowing that the serpent is lurking. And we just read this on Tuesday, ironically. When I was going through this this week, I'm like, we just read this Tuesday. Mark, Mark chapter 16, verse 14. Afterward, he appeared unto the 11 as they sat at meeting and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. This was after he was risen before he ascended to heaven. And he like, y'all still don't believe. And by this time, this is the third time, I believe. Second or third time that he had showed himself until the 11 disciples left. Mind you, Judas is gone. And he said unto them, go you into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Let me read that again. And he said unto them, go you unto into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Great as those who publish the word, as David just said in Psalm 68. He that believe and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believe not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents and if they drink any deadly thing, something poisonous, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. This is what he told them. Anybody, and the, these are the signs that will follow them who believe. Shaul, why didn't he swallow? Because he believed. Because he believed when it said no weapon formed against him shall prosper. Because he believed when Abiyah told him, I'm going to use you to be a fisherman to me. And he believed when he told him, you're going to go to Rome. And you're going to speak to these Israelites up there. He believed when he called him and he told him, you ain't just some African-American. You ain't just some slave. You are an Israelite. And he believed enough that when he heard that, he picked up the covenant and he started to learn, relearn the history of his people. He believed enough that I'm going to start keeping these commandments. And not only that, and I, we were reading, um, a cult T speed was reading Galatians five early. What was we at? When he figured out, when he awoke and he knew he was an Israelite, he believed enough that he believed that the fruit of the spirit was he had to be better at showing love. He had to be better at spreading joy. He had to be better at spreading shalom. He had to be more long suffering, which I said was patience earlier. Let's see some here. Forbearance, it is patience. I know I went tripping. He had to be more gentle. See, we, what? what when, when we be woke up to the truth when we, and we say that we believe, this is the start of the belief. And anything outside of this being the start of the belief, we've fallen short of the glory still. He had to be better at goodness. He had to get his faith stronger. He had to be more meek. Now, just because I done showed you, show, show more humility, just because I done showed you some truth about the Bible and you may know the Bible better than your uncle or your aunt, who always been around you telling you in Jesus' name you need to do this and that. And now because I done showed you some truth, you can't. And I did this. Let me make sure I say that first. I did this. 
You can't wait to get around that person for them to get to talking all that nonsense about the Bible that you know they wrong so you can put them in their place. No, that ain't what I woke you up for. <laughs> that ain't the fruit of the spirit. Because you believe you got to show more temperance, self-control. All that shouting folks down, acting crazy, where you get that from? You didn't get that from me. Because against touch, there is no law. Why did this serpent bite Shaul and it didn't have no effect? It was because he believed. And because he believed, he got his fruits of the spirit together. Because he believed, he became, he started to love his brother more. Because he believed, he went to learn to properly learn Yahuwah before he ever got to doing anything. He had to properly do that. And Yah got him right with that. In the three days, he blinded him and he had to sit still. This is why this snake, after the storm, the serpent that's lurking don't got no power over you. It's because, because you believe you working on that. You working on your temperance and your patience. You working on love and loving your brother and your sister properly. You working on showing the proper faith. You working on all of those things that's the fruits of the spirit. And the signs of those who will believe is you're going to take hold of the serpent and nothing poisonous can kill you. And you're going to lay hands and, re and heal the sick. And you're going to cast out demons in his name. It was something else he said. And you're going to speak in new tongues. And when you speak in these tongues, you're going to understand what you're saying. You're not just going to be babbling. It's because you believe. And after the storm, we have to believe that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Even though we came through the storm, we have to believe and know that the serpent is still lurking. And he might even jump out the fire and bite. And we gonna dust him off and keep moving. And not because we a God either. See, people around you view what's going on with you. And they gonna think that about some of y'all. And we gonna make sure we let them know, I ain't nobody God. I've been anointed by the most high God though. I've been anointed by the most high Yah. And you see the anointment on me because the fruits of my spirit is right. See it all. You know, it's funny, I'm taking this class and it's teaching me all these equations and these financial statements and all of that. And he keep reinforcing that. You got to get the first step right because every step leading up to the next step is based off of the step before. Look at Torah the same way. Whatever the first step may be, because nobody knows all of this. You may just know one thing. You got to get that one thing right. Because every step off of that one thing you correct is based off of everything before. And when you get the fruits of the spirit and all this 100% right, then you're going to walk in a different kind of power. You're going to walk in this kind of power that Shaul got, of which some of you, all of us, may already walk in, in, in this type of power. I don't want to get bit by no snake to prove it. I can't stand a snake. <laughs> but... It's already somewhere in you. We just got to get the steps right. And the reason why we actively try to get the steps right is because just like Shaul, you believe. In the same quarters were possessions of the chief man of the island whose name was P Pubilus, who received us and lodged us three days courteously. The head man of the island was there and they ran and told him, Man, it is a Negro over there just got bit by one of them snakes. He didn't even swell up. Matter of fact, the whole scene was crazy. The snake climbed out the fire while he was putting the sticks down he had gathered. We out here gathering sticks. And there's people trying to tell somebody about you. Like, you don't even know they telling them about you because they ain't never acknowledged to you that they felt what you were saying. But then when they out in the community and they see somebody and they like, what's such and such been up to? And you wouldn't even believe her if you seen her now, man. It's all about this and the Torah and she keeping feet. She don't eat pork no more. She ain't stripping no more. <laughs> he ain't out playing with them guns, with them Negroes no more. You wouldn't even believe him if you seen them right now. And it's got somebody else looking for you and you don't even know it. It's got somebody else looking for you who may not even never say they looking for you. They just want to get around you to see if it's true. Pubilus heard that story and he lodged us three days courteously. And it came to pass that the father of Pubilus lay sick of a fever 
and of a bloody flux to whom Shaul entered in and prayed and laid his hands on him and healed him. Why? Because the signs of the one who believes, who gets the fruit of the spirit right. Remember, belief is an action word. You don't just believe in Hamashiach because he's some black man. If you do, you're going to fail. You don't just believe in being righteous because somebody told you that the descendants of the transatlantic slave trade is Israelites. If that's the end all be all of your awakening, you are going to fail. If that is your whole conversation, you already fail. If all you worried about is, is, is the rebuke and, and the, um, the damnation of everything and everybody, you are going to fail because that ain't what Torah is about. Torah is about giving people hope. Torah is about being somebody inspiration. Torah is about the whole reason for the Torah is to inspire you. These stories is to inspire you. We ain't just reading about Moses thinking Moses was a bad man. Yeah, he's supposed to be inspiration. That's in you too. Deborah was a bad occulty. That's supposed to be inspiration. That's in you too. Same as Esther, same as David, same as Abraham, same as Isaac, same as Jacob. Judas in you too, if you play that role. Cain in you too, if you play that role. The Torah, the whole point of the Bible is a bunch of stories about what to be and what not to be. <laughs> and because you believe, and because we got these things together and we working on these things every day, Abba, y'all, that's why we pray and we ask you to strengthen us in this journey because it's a lot to this. Just because we learn we some Israelite don't mean you finna walk in nowhere and cast out no demon. It's also stories in here when you're not prepared for that and you think you do that and that demon will beat you out your clothes. <laughs> it is a story, man. That demon said, I know Shaul, I know y'all sure. Who is you? Shaul is representing what it's like when you believe. He went and laid hands on the man's father and healed him. A heathen at that. Look at that. I'm sure it's some Israelite somewhere who will try to tell me Hubilis is really from the tribe of Deftali, man. These people. <laughs> oh, man. What is Paul doing healing the heathen, man? That's crazy. You know, if the Pharisees heard that, they have him brought back to Jerusalem to kill him. What you doing healing them? He healed him because he know the story about the dog. Even the dog get the crumbs off the children's plate. I'm sure it's an Israelite somewhere who would tell me that when Hamashiach told that woman that she was really gad and the Messiah called a daughter of Zion a dog. What? What scripture is that? So when this was done, others also which had diseases in the island came and were healed. See, these are the signs of him that believed. After the storm, serpent still lurking, we got this power in us. We just got to believe. And our belief got to get stronger than what it's been. It's got to get better than what it is. It's got to get more faithful. It's got to show more humility. It's got to know that these attacks is coming. From people whom you love too. And it's gonna hurt. And you wanna cuss them out. <laughs> some of you might even come from you, might wanna throw some hands. But because you believe, you ain't on that no more. See, part of belief also comes with I know can't nobody play with me because my Elohim will stand on something about me. I ain't got to say nothing to you. I was just telling my Josh a story about when I sold my house. And one of my neighbors did something who I never really cared about. He was racist anyway. And he finally did something on my way out the house. I had been there with Shelly 10 years and I had it in my mind. I was going to cuss him out as soon as I saw him because he did something. It really didn't matter, but I just didn't appreciate his tone when I wasn't there. And I told my other neighbor who was cool with him, let him know when I catch him out here, I'm putting him in his place. I don't care because he's no elder. <laughs> And she was like, I don't know if you should do it like that. You a young black man. This is an old white man. You need to gain that man a heart attack. And I'm like, I don't care. He should have disrespected my lawn. <laughs> Look at me acting like an old man. He disrespected my lawn. 
And the next time I seen that man, it was a week later. And he was standing in his driveway with a walker. And it was a, a CNA, one of them traveling nurses was out there with him, teaching him how to walk. And naturally, I didn't say nothing to him. I was like, dang, what happened to him? And the next time I seen my neighbor, because she was cool with him and she was cool with me, I said, what happened to I seen him. I ain't say nothing to him because he was looking bad. She was like, you know, right after I talked to you, he had a stroke. He almost died. They got to teach him how to walk again. And I remember, I knew it then, though. I'm in the truth then. This two years ago. And I remember going in the house and praying and just saying, I got to be cool. I was finna check this man and y'all had set him down for playing. <laughs> I got to be cool. This is another reason why we can't just be willy-nilly out here talking about we praying about our enemies. Because we'll be in our mind thinking, oh, these white people that did all this and that to me in America. Yah, when is you going to come judge my enemies? And in your mind, y'all going to say, nigga, your enemy is your kids because they keeping you from fully worshiping me and being killed your son. So you got to be careful when you talk about who an enemy because who y'all view as your enemy may not be who you view. Them people ain't keeping you from tour. Your mama is, because she telling you, you wild and doing this and that in the Bible, so you toning down tour, letting her be reckless around you because you don't want to disrespect your mama, but really your mama is the enemy of y'all because they keeping you from being with y'all that called you to be. You better be careful running around here talking about you praying about an enemy because you walk with this power. You walk with this power, which is why you got to be meek which is why you got to be humble, which is why you got to be cool with what y'all's doing for you because you don't even fully understand what y'all's doing. Shaul did, though. This is why he ain't just running around reckless. Hamashiach, they was like, do you want us to pray and have fire rain down on the city? Hamashiach said, nigga, what is you talking about? <laughs> that ain't what we here to do. You talk about killing Israel because they ain't want to hear the word and you done lost though. See how reckless we get? See how reckless we would get if we was walking with this power? Y'all ain't ready for that. That's what he's telling him. No, you got to get your fruits of your spirit right first. And I know we all got an area where we working on. I hear it every week when we hear these testimonies. I'm working too. But when we get these fruits right, though, you're going to heal a whole island. Because the signs of the believer is that. I done set you up for this. Even after the storm where they try to take your life and the serpent is lurking. Know that. He can't hurt you, though. Who also honored us with many honors. And when we departed, they laid at us with such things as were necessary. That's what the fruits of the spirit do. That's what the fruits of the spirit do. When you walk in properly with the most high, this is this is your reception amongst strangers or whoever else. Amongst Israel or whoever else, which is the irony in this is. When we done read through Acts now, we done made it to the end. Shaul done been through out of just about every city he been at. <laughs> Except for around these foreigners who don't know no better. They gave him honors. Why? Because a workman is worth his pay. It's a lot of things that Hamashiach said to the disciples that were fulfilled in these first 10 verses right here. A workman is worth his pay. The signs of the believer. Right. It is a lot of things. The fruits of the spirit. How you supposed to be. We ain't, don't be everywhere. Just judging folks. When Shaul was on that boat with the Romans, he could have said, I know y'all's word is true. I know whether we crash in the sea or not. I'm going to wash up on the shores of Rome. All oh, y'all finna die. I ain't telling y'all nothing. Yeah, whatever. He could have did that. Some of us today with the mentality of Israel in the awakening would do it just like that. I don't care nothing about these evens. Let them all die. That ain't a fruit of the spear. That's not the fruits of the spear. And because we believe, we got to get the fruits of the spear together. And after three months, we departed in a ship of Alexandria, which had wintered in the isle, whose sign was Castor and Pollux, which is some Greek heathen God. Three months. Shaul have been out on this water on this trek to Rome for a minute now. We looking at probably close to, they've been there three, so they probably are been close to four months. He still ain't made it to Rome. But he know Hamashiach said, you're going to make it to Rome. So you're going to make it to Rome. 
this Castor and Pollux is a um. I actually wrote this down because I thought this was funny too. The sons of Jupiter, which is really Zeus. So this boat is named after a a a a, a, a Greek god, and it's about it's the, the constellation Gemini. They are identified with the constellation Gemini, which I thought that was funny, man. We run around here, people are all caught up into these. Um, I can't even think of a proper name for them, but you know, it's Gemini season. <laughs> People be reading your horoscope trying to tell you, oh, you a Gemini, you gonna do this and that, man. They telling you, they they trying to liken you to Castor and Pollux, sons of Greek gods. And landing at Syracuse, we tarried three days. Where they at now? He still ain't made it far. So you got a long way to roam. From thence we fetched a compass and came to Regium. And after one day the south wind blew and we came the next day to, I think it tell me where it was at. Okay, they went from Syracuse to south wind, blew them up here. This is why we gotta be faithful in the storm because that same wind that was just contrary to him. Y'all done made the win get in order. Now I'm supporting him getting Shaul to where he got to go. The south wind blew him up to Petulia. Petuli. I don't know. Petatuli. I don't know. Ratatuli. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't speak Greek. Where we found brethren and were desired to tarry with them seven days. This has been a long journey to Rome. And so we went toward Rome. Shaul found some Israelites there. He tarried with them seven days too. Chopping up about Torah. This is how I got here. This was going on. This all let them happen. And he told them the same thing we saying in here today. Get your fruits of the spirit right. Know that in the name of Abashiach, the Messiah has come and all things is possible. And y'all gonna survive up here too. I know it's hectic. You in Rome, you up under these heathens. They be wildin'. I know it's hectic. You tired of being here? Get your fruits of the spirit right. You're going to be okay. Yeah, I created Goshen anywhere. That's why we got to get past the landmass. Egypt just mean house of bondage. Y'all can create a Goshen anywhere. It's Goshen's right here in America. We don't even know it. Oh, we might know it. Don't let me say that. <laughs> this ghost is right here. Those brethren right there, these are the type of folks who Shaul wrote that letter to the Romans to. And from thence, when the brethren heard of us, they came to meet us as far as a P form in the three taverns. It's a well, probably a well known place in Italy. Probably still known. If I can find it, it's probably still somewhere folks be at. It was an ancient post, 63 kilometers southeast of Rome. Young people still know where that's at. And the three taverns, whom when Shaul saw, he thanked Elohim and took courage. Shaul, like, man, this has been a journey. I'm almost to Rome. And when we came to Rome, the centurion delivered the prisoners to the captain of the guard. But Shaul was suffered to dwell by himself with a soldier that kept him. See, we in Rome now. And it's Israelites here. Y'all might feel away. But he been called to go see Caesar. And he's a Roman soldier. Ain't that crazy how Shaul had to get all the way to Rome before his life wasn't in danger no more? If that ain't today. If that ain't today. Real talk. We talk all this mess about the police and all of that, and all that is reckless here today. Don't get it twisted. As Mr. Hebrew say, them race soldiers be out here wilding with the badges and them guns. Don't get it twisted. But you a fool if you think you in more danger with the police than you is amongst young Israel who on these corners. You a lie. 
And the only reason why you believe that is because you live somewhere where young Israel ain't on the corner. Because if you live where young Israel on the corner, you know who the threat is. <laughs> to you, your house, your family. You would die by the hands of young Israel alone before you die by the hands of the police. And thankfully to Yah with the fruits of the spirit, I don't believe none of them folks can kill you. Y'all got a purpose for your life and it ain't to just die on no corner because some Israelite is out there off of Mali and you made a mistake and stepped on these Jordans. I just don't see that. I just don't see that. But that's the threat. Shaul has been in more danger amongst his own people than anywhere else. Hamashiach was in more danger amongst his own people than anywhere else. King David, as Maak Josh been reading Samuel, King David was in more danger amongst his own people than the Philistines, and Israel was at war with them. Ain't that something? <laughs> King David was in more danger amongst Israel than he was amongst the Philistines, and Israel at that time was at war with the Philistines. Have you ever thought about that? He was in danger amongst his own people. And the Phil After, and they knew he was the one who killed Goliath, they champion, and he was chilling. They was like, just leave David be. Matter of fact, keep your eye on him because them mighty men with him, they'd take the city if they really won't. We glad he ain't up here acting like that. And he was in more danger amongst Israel than he was amongst his own people. Same as Shaul. This is the safest his physical life has been is in Rome with the Romans protecting him from his own people. That speaks to the shamefulness of how Israel had been shameful for a long time. And it came to pass that after three days, Shaul called the chief of the Israelites. See, they there. This is who these letters to the Romans is to. Israel is there. He called the chiefs. And say the Jews here. But y'all, I told y'all from the beginning of this, the using of this word Jew is really a send-off word. Because it would have you believe that the only people Shaul is talking to is the tribe of Judah. But on, on its face, that don't make no sense because Shaul is from Benjamin. So why would he why wouldn't he be going amongst Benjamin? Why everywhere it say the Jews, it don't say Shaul when it's said with Benjamin. That's his people. If we looking at it like that, which we understand that an ancient Israel, an ancient Israelite, even though he's from different tribes, he knew that all of his people was his people. Shaul called the chief of the Israelites together. And when they were come together, he said unto them, men and brethren, though I have committed nothing against the people or customs of our fathers, I'm teaching Torah and I ain't broke no laws. Yet was I delivered prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans. He had to get up there and tell his own people that. I already know, man. They didn't wrote y'all from back home, man. They told y'all. I'm here to let you know. Jerusalem ain't what it used to be. We be traveling back for these feasts. Y'all better watch them Negroes down there. They claiming to be this and that. They really not. They wear fringes. They keep a feast. They ain't got the fruits of the spirit together. They ain't understood the teachings of Hamashiach the right way. And he was walking amongst them while they was trying to be naysayers. And he was letting them know. This is why they told him, you casting out demons by Beelzebub. He said, well, how you doing it? <laughs> they said, well, we ain't doing it. Yeah, because the fruits of your spirit. <laughs> That's funny. You ever thought about that? Hamashiach, they said, you doing that by the devil. Hamashiach said, all right, well, how y'all doing it? Knowing they can't do it. They can't heal nobody. They ain't casting out no demons. They scared of the demons. One buddy up in the mountains, Israel was so scared of him, they had him chained up in the mountains somewhere. They didn't even want him in the city. They was terrified of him. The temple ain't what it used to be. This awakening ain't what it used to be. <laughs> Don't you just be trusting everybody who come up here from Jerusalem because he got all his fringes and he black and he talking about he's some Israelites. You better be careful. 
like the Black Panthers, they send somebody who's secretly working for the FBI, send y'all off up here. You better know who coming through here. The temple ain't what it used to be. They down there bear false witness. Mind you, too, in the acts, everybody knows the story of Hamashiach and how everything that went with his life. There is no secret. So I always infer when I read this, this part of the conversation, you heard the way they did Mary, boy? He ain't did nothing but heal some folks. Matter of fact, because a lot of it happened at these feasts, some of y'all was traveling back, the ones who could, to Jerusalem. Y'all know some folks running right around here who he healed, who he cast out demons on, who came back. You seen Buddy go down there, his family had to carry him. He couldn't even walk. Fam came back up here running wind sprints. Y'all know what I'm saying is true. A lot of y'all was down there at the Passover when they killed him. Y'all seen the sun? And y'all didn't even have to be down there for the Passover because the sun was blocked out for three hours up here too. It didn't say Israel shook. It said the earth shook. It was an earthquake up here in Rome too. Y'all know what time it was? Everybody know. Now the heathen is trying to say it was this and that and they God did this and that. That's their business. You know. If nothing else, the Roman soldiers who was with Pilate came back here and was like, I just seen the amazing. A couple days ago, and well, I don't know. This took four months for Shaul to get from Jerusalem to Rome. You remember two months ago, man, 30, 60 suns ago. Did you feel the earthquake up here? Yeah, it was crazy, bro. All the way up here, it was an earthquake. Y'all know how I be the animals since at first. The dogs was barking crazy. The cattle, all of these animals was acting crazy. The sun, it was an eclipse for this long and this and that and this. And the Roman soldiers said, yeah, that was the same day we killed that Israelite, man. It was so wild down there. Temple ain't what it used to be. Y'all know. Make sure y'all know. I ain't just teaching you nothing about no Hebrew Israelite. Because if you get away from me around our own Hebrew Israelite, he'd be to sent you off. Is that on me? No, all I'm telling you is you need to pick up your Bible and learn who your folks is. And all of y'all intelligent. You don't need me and nobody else to interpret it for you. Dig into the book the same way you dig into these video games and you dig into Facebook and you dig into uh, movies or whatever, music or whatever you into. That's your business. We got to stop that too. I don't know what you listen to. That's your business what you listen to. Set some, time, set some time aside to listen to Yada and let him tell you you shouldn't be doing X, Y, Z. That ain't my place to tell you that. Let, let, it, let him without seeing cast the first stone. If y'all walked right on this call, if Yahushua walked on this call with us right now and somebody was out of order and he said, let him without seeing cast the first stone, all however many of us in here, I guarantee probably can't nobody in here cast a stone. Matter of fact, I know can't nobody cast a stone because we all too casually throw around. Ain't nobody perfect. <laughs> I know can't nobody cast a stone. So who am I to be telling you unless it's egregious now? But I can't nitpick sin with you. All I can tell you is you need to try to find the father and let him tell you. Let him tell. Now when he tell you, take heed. If you believe, you'll take heed. Jerusalem it ain't what it used to be. The temple ain't what it used to be. They out here bear false witness on each other. They out here showing respect to persons to each other. It ain't what it used to be. These the Israelites who the Book of Romans was sent back to, which was probably a letter to them. We call it a book. Verse 18, they said, who? When they examine me, who? Who are you talking about? What's going on in Jerusalem? No, I'm wilding. He said, who, when they examine me, these Romans would have let me go. He about to say that, though. <laughs> because there was no cause of death in me. It took the Romans to step in and show that they was righteous. Ain't that something? And they weren't even righteous, but they did a righteous deed, I should say. Because they ain't righteous. Same thing happens here in America. They ain't really righteous, but they did a righteous deed. Obama ain't righteous, but at least he gave Negroes the chance to get health insurance. <laughs> oh, man. 
Somebody unrighteous could do a righteous deed. They don't make them righteous. The Pharisees ain't righteous, but whenever they read that book on Shabbat, listen to what they say out that book, though. But don't, 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 don't do what they've been doing, though. You don't want to do that. The Romans would let me go when they examine me. But when the Israelites, or was it Judah, spake against it, no, it wasn't Judah because the priest was with him and they was Levi. That's what I'm saying. This term Jew is kind of used real reckless in the New Testament. And it had you thinking something crazy if you don't know no better. But when the Israelites spake against it, I was constrained to appeal unto Caesar. Not that I had ought to accuse my nation of. I had to appeal this to Caesar, which I understand that Hamashiach was leading me because I needed to come to Rome and talk to you. Y'all is always in control. I felt I had to appeal this to Caesar because if them Israelites worked on them, them governors and different people down there long enough and told them we're going to rebel and take the city and you're going to die and Pilate and Caesar and they're going to kill you, Pilate. If you don't kill him, we're going to tell these people to tear this city up as Passover. It's a million of us here. It's only a hundred of you soldiers. We take this from you, blah, 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 blah. And when they get back to Caesar, you did that. You're going to die, Pilate. Pilate said, kill that nigga. I ain't never for them. <laughs> Even though I don't think he did nothing wrong, he ain't gonna get me killed. I know that's how he said it. Same thing they was trying to do to Shaul. Shaul said, but I was a Roman citizen and I ain't the Messiah. See, he knew he was here for that. They thought they were doing something with him and he was using them to fulfill the prophecy to make the word of Yah be true. I thought that I was saving my life, telling them, man, I'm a Roman citizen. Appeal me to Caesar. But the whole time, Hamashiach was using me to come to Rome to speak to y'all to make the word of y'all be true. The word will be spoken to the four corners of the earth. It will be published to the four corners of the earth. I have chosen some, like Psalm 68. Great are those who have published it. This was my job. I thought I was saving myself and the whole time. Y'all was always in control. Remember that. We think we saving ourselves. Yah is always in control. It don't matter with nothing. He is always in control. I didn't have all to accuse my nation of, not with these Romans. They breaking Torah. These Romans don't care nothing about that. They breaking our law. They bear a false witness. They wilder. But it's okay. For this cause, therefore, have I called for you to see and to speak with you, because that for the hope of Yasharal. I am bound with these chains because I am serious about what I'm saying about our people. I am bound with these chains. I don't mind. Because the expectation, because of my confidence, my faith in Yashara, my faith in the covenant that's been put up on us. I'm bound with these chains. And I he ain't really in chains. He said he got to stay in his own house, but it is a guard garden. The prisoners got locked in jail. He get to move free and talk to Israelites that's in Rome. It's Israelites in Rome. I understand now. I had to go through all of that because Hamashiach was leading me right here to have this conversation with y'all. And they said unto him, this is where I had a mistake in that. They was like, ain't nobody said nothing from down there about you to us. We neither receive letters out of Judea concerning thee, neither any of the brethren that came showed or spake any harm of thee. Israelites traveling. This is how I know at that feast, that last feast when Hamashiach died, it was a lot of Israelites had traveled back to Jerusalem for that Passover because they had heard too many of the miracles and the stories that he was doing at all of the events. So if nothing else, we a gossipy people anyway. So if nothing else, even if it was just to see a miracle, we don't really believe, man, what's all them stories? You keep coming from Jerusalem. I'm going. And then you see him heal somebody and you like, dang, I should have brought my own. Next year, I'm coming with on. My auntie, my granny, my child. Israelites is traveling. They ain't send no letters about you. And it's been Israelites traveling back and forth from Jerusalem. They ain't said nothing about you. They probably thought you didn't die because they know that you were supposed to leave and be in Rome 
It don't take four months to get there. It's been four months, five months since you got here. They probably thought he died at sea. We ain't had to do nothing about him. He dead. Now ain't nobody saying nothing to us about you, which that would be of y'all too. Let me make it take this long for you to get there. That way, by the time you get there, you can speak fresh with these Israelites. They ain't even been burdened down with all that confusion. But we desire to hear of thee what thou think. For it's concerning this sect. What sect? There's some Israelites who believe the Messiah came. We don't know. You know, the Pharisees and their teachings he is here. They telling us not true. But it's too many Israelites traveling back and forth who was down at that Passover, who was around these events. Hell, I even met such and such. He healed his son. I met the son. Man, the son. It's been a few years. The son, when he got healed, he was 12. He 18 now, and he, he's standing on it. No, the Messiah helped me. We know that everywhere it is spoken against. What's said? You crazy Negroes who run around here talking about that Jesus was a black man <laughs> and that he had dreadlocks. What's said? You Negroes. You know who? Y'all, you're on the corner wearing weird suits and talking all crazy. And no, nah, I ain't part of that sect. Them the radical. <laughs> See how this go? See how this been going? It ain't just you. It ain't just us. What sect? Oh, you know the sect. The one Tyler Perry made that show about. No, nah, I don't know what they are. <laughs> hey, yo, I don't know what them dick rolls on. Is you crazy? No, no, no. We know that everywhere it is spoken against. Really? You know what's funny? I remember I first came into the truth about 2016 and 17-ish. And I would talk about this. Most people I would talk to, they had never even heard nothing about this. And just to show you the power of y'all. When you talk to people about the truth now, quote unquote, black folks, African-Americans, and even other folks, you are hard pressed to find somebody, whether they believe or not is not the issue, but you are hard pressed to find somebody who ain't never heard that the belief is that black folks is the people of the Bible. That's hard to find now. Whether the belief or not, that conversation has spread through African-American descendant of slavery like wildfire. These rappers been running around saying it and getting shushed. Be that as it may, but that's why these young folks all done heard. Kendrick Lamar right now with his whole little thing he got going on, he had been rapping about it now for about 10 years, Kendrick been rapping, saying that he was an Israelite. And now that's on full stage. And to think, I'm almost positive he finna go on that Super Bowl stage, the biggest stage in America, and he finna rap one of them songs where he on there talking about he an Israelite in front of the whole world. See, and that's why you can't judge folks because you got a lot of Israelites who would judge him. Man, he live like this, he live like that. So do niggas right in this truth. This niggas right in this truth come in adultery, steal fornicating, lying to women, not taking care of their kids. Stop. I, that's why I just can't hear that. I just can't hear that. We a judge just because he got money and really done live the life a lot of Negroes wish they could live and then come into the truth and they have it. And he about to go on that stage in front of 100 million. They said 100 million people watched the Super Bowl last year and Kendrick is finna rap DNA where he on there talking about he Yahshua's new weapon and <laughs> well, I tell you, y'all got a way to make a point, and that is why that conversation is known everywhere. A lot of these elders know that conversation now. You see videos of certain churches now. They want to say Yah and Yahushua. Now they still teaching we eat pork and celebrating Christmas. But you hard pressed to find somebody now who ain't like, yeah, we know that everywhere that sect is spoken against. But if we walk with the fruits of the spirit, just like Shaul, somebody will sit down with us and say, man, teach us a little bit more of that. I don't know if I agree, but how is they going to teach us more of that if we're not coming in love and joy and peace and long suffering and kindness and gentleness and we coming in fiery and all oh, you Negroes going to hell because you ain't learned this name and we got to stop that. We destroying our own people acting like that. They ain't going to teach them it in school. If we don't humble ourselves to tell our people who ignorant of these things, these things, who going to tell them? Granted, y'all choose who we want. He can show any of us in any way. 
we're not going to shortchange that. But he also called you for a reason. And these are the signs that follow the believer. But we got to get the fruits of the spirit right. And we got to understand that even after the storm, the serpent is still there. That's the theme of this. Because it leads to this when we do this the right way. And when they had appointed him a day, there came many to him into his lodging. Israelites, who? He said for the hope of Israel. I meant to highlight that when I said that. That's how we know we, he ain't just talking to the tribe of Judah and he ain't calling them no Gentiles. He's saying, I'm up here talking to Israel. Who in Rome? Who in Rome? The belly of the beast, let a lot of us tell it. There's one thing when you coming from Macedonia and all of that, they in Rome, which we would call the belly of the beast. It is the, it is the, Rome has played, and popes over these last 2,000 years have played the biggest hand in selling idolatry and wickedness to this world. And Shaul is like, it's Israelites here who know they Israelites. And many of them came, he said, to whom he expounded and testified. So all we got to talk about is the kingdom of Yah. It ain't got to be no whole bunch of nothing. Persuading them concerning Yahushua, both out of the law and the prophets. See why they told you the Old Testament was done away with? This is where you get your confirmation from. From morning to evening. This is the job. This is what the fruits, the fruits of the spirit will allow you this opportunity. If you ain't never had the opportunity to do this with nobody, we need to check our fruits of the spirit. It ain't on the person. If you ain't never had the opportunity to do this with nobody, it's because the fruits of our spirit ain't right. Because if it is, Abba Yah gonna create the opportunity. That's the point. Abba Yah don't want to see nobody go to hell. He definitely don't want to see Israel judge, which is our point, which is your job, which is why I called you. I ain't called you to sit up and just be woofing amongst each other. He ain't called us to be sitting up just woofing amongst each other, man. It's much bigger than that. There's a lot of Israelites out here who don't know. They didn't heard that story. They didn't heard that about that sect. <laughs> That's so funny. And they know that everywhere they go, it's spoken against. You know why? Because the representation of it is you going to hell and you this and you that with a bullhorn on a corner and some funny suits and some crazy looking signs. <laughs> That's all they know. They don't know a Yahusha. Your average everyday Israelite who walk around here ignorant, he don't know nobody as smooth as Yahusha who could come in and just tell him like, no, nah, man, look, this is how we moving. <laughs> they don't know him. They do not know him. They don't know an ox speed. No, they don't know him. No, they do not know him. They don't know Obadiah. They don't know nobody that smooth doing that. All they know is the recklessness that's attached to this. So how can we think anything other than this thing look crazy? They don't know him. They don't know him. This is the job. Get our fruits of the spirit right, and Yah is going to and Yah is going to provide you opportunity to speak to whom He's calling. This is the point of you being who you are. And some believe the things which were spoken and some believe not. That's okay. Pray for them that believe not. Celebrate them that believe. Hallelujah. We too, we too focused on who don't believe. We too focused on who don't believe. Relate a message and focus on who believe. That's it. Pray for those who don't. Still understanding that many are called, but few are chosen. We don't know who. We don't know who. We're just praying that it's us. Praying that it's our kids. Praying that it's our families, our mothers, our fathers, our grandparents, whoever. We don't know. Verse 25. And when they agreed not among themselves, they departed after that Shaul had spoken one word. Well spake the Ruach HaKodesh 
by Isaiah, it says Isaiah, Yeshaya or Yeshayahu, the prophet unto our fathers. What word did he speak? He says, say, go unto this people and say, hearing you shall hear. Oh, they hear you. They don't understand. And seeing you shall see, but they can't perceive. They don't know. They don't understand. <laughs> For the heart of this people is wax gross. It's heavy. It's been burdened. It's been worn down. I'm going to bring up wax growth, but we're going to read this. It's thick. It's fatty. It's been stupefied. And their ears are dull of hearing. Yeah, because that's all we've been doing is hearing. Change is going to come. Joy come in the morning, and it ain't came. It's just getting worse. It looked like it's getting better. You got a black woman, supposedly. Look like she about to be the president. We had a black man. It looked like it's getting better, don't it? I go out south and post up on one of them corners in Chicago. Go to Charlotte, to the hood. Go to Memphis, Avad Yahoo, to the hood. You want to see if it's getting better, Mama Speed? Go down to New Orleans, whatever's left of their hood. They flooded you Negroes out. Oh. <laughs> it ran, y'all. But I know it's a hood around there still somewhere. Go check it out. You want to see why they dull are here? Because they didn't hurt every turn. It looked like it's getting better. Go to these spots, though. You ain't got to go to them big cities. Go to Youngstown, Ohio. Go to Dayton. I was just in Dayton, Ohio. Go there. See what Israel look like there. You ain't got to go to these big cities you hear about. Come to Joliet, Illinois. 30 minutes south of Chicago. Let's go to where Negroes at. Ain't no more hoods here either. They flooded these Negroes out too in a different way. <laughs> but they still around. Don't get it twisted. We ain't got to go to these big cities that everybody hear about. You ain't got to go to none of these big old cities that everybody hear about. Go to Shreveport. Go to Baton Rouge. We're boosting them from. That ain't a big city. I hear about it though. You ain't got to go to these big cities. That's why they dull in here. And their eyes have they closed. Why? We done heard about all the hope. Christianity and these different religions that gave us every speech of hope. Change gonna come. We got songs and all of that. This is why they dull in here and they can't see. Because ain't nobody never went and told them the truth. At least they should see with their eyes and hear and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. That's where you come in. He was telling, he was telling, he was telling Isaiah that as he was telling them, go back and holler at them folks. Isaiah, like I'm unclean. I turn right to that. Isaiah said, I'm unclean. I'm sure that's right here. Is that right here? Yeah, that's right here. Then said I, woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. Look at the humility of Isaiah. <laughs> we can't even say that. We didn't know woke now. We too high and mighty. We can't even admit that. I'm a man of unclean lips. I'm trying now. And I don't fall like I used to. So it's progress now. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen... The king, Isaiah said, I'm a man of unclean lips. Then flew one of the seraphims, an angel unto him, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongues from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Same happened to you. It wasn't as elaborate as when it happened to Isaiah, but this is how you got here. This is why you were able to speak Torah. Because y'all have forgave you somewhere. Also, I heard the voice of the, the voice of the Most High saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I believe he said Messiah there, the king, but be that as it may. Then said I, here am I, send me. And he said, go and tell this people, <laughs> hear you indeed, but understand not, and see you indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat and make their ears heavy and shut their eyes, at least they see with their ears. And hear with their see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and convert and be healed. Go, Shaul. Not Shaul. Yes, Shaul too. Isaiah. Same job. 
Go back and tell Israel the truth. I know their hearts didn't got fat. I know they eyes shut, but go tell them. Then I then said I, how long? Y'all, how long? And he answered, till the cities be wasted without inhabitants and the houses without men and the land be utterly destroyed. That doesn't happen. Granted, there's people there. You ain't. That doesn't happen. And the most I have removed men far away. Israel, you far away. That doesn't happen. And there be a great forsaken in the midst of the land. That doesn't happen. That doesn't happen. Still, go tell these folks, Isaiah, who was humble enough to say, I know I'm unclean. I know I'm unclean. Don't let me get to I know it. Be it known, therefore, verse 28, Acts 28, 28. We coming to the end. I ain't going to hold y'all up no longer, man. You ain't got to hear from me. You ain't got to hear from me. <laughs> go read your Bible. That, go open it up. Anywhere. Start in Genesis if it's on your heart, but open it up anywhere. Except for Revelation. If you don't understand nothing about the whole Bible, you're going to struggle with Revelation. And even then, if y'all say open it up there, open it up there. Be it known, therefore, unto you that the salvation of Yahuwah is sent out unto the Gentiles and that they will hear. Who? He talking to Israel. Who is these Gentiles? That's a good question. I heard Dr. Avi ask that yesterday. That's a good question. Who is these Gentiles? And he said he talking to Israel. But and when he said these words, and they go throwing the Jew in on you again. <laughs> I tell you, boy, the craftiness of these folks with this book is insane. This is why we got to pray before we open up this book. You don't understand the book? Pray before you open up the book. Y'all show you the book. It's his to show you. And Jeremiah, it says that the word was written in heaven. I got to find that scripture because I've been quoting that scripture for the last two weeks to folks. and I don't even know where it's at. <laughs> the word is established in heaven. Let me find that. Stop saying that to folks, man. Somebody going to think I'm woofing. The word is established in heaven. I know it was in Jeremiah. I know it's in Psalms. He said that in Jeremiah too. I ain't off that far. Maybe I am. Maybe it is Psalms. Now forgive me. Is it there? Psalms 11989. I had a mere office seat. Is it there? I thought it was in Jeremiah. Bala. Forgive me. I don't profess to be the one who know the Bible off the, off the back of his hand, not scripture for scripture, but I know where we going. <laughs> I'm the one who know where we going, though. Is that even where I'm going? Uh -uh. Oh, yeah. Psalms 119. Oh, that's funny. It's the Lamed, too, the staff. That's very interesting that it's the first verse of when the Lamb it is, which the staff is representing the shepherd of Mashiach, all that. But forever, oh yeah, thy word is settled in heaven. It don't matter how many hands it have bent them. They can't change it. Back to where I was going. Be it known therefore unto you that the salvation of Elohim is sent unto the Gentiles and that they will hear. I sent it to you, Israel. The word has always been yours as well. The covenant is yours. Nobody can take that. All of the perks of this Bible are for Israel. But if you don't want to listen, I'm going to use some of these folks to show you what this is supposed to look like. And it's going to provoke you to jealousy. Moses said the same thing in Deuteronomy. A foolish nation, he said, he's going to use. A people without a, what did he say? A people without a tongue, something like that. I'm going to use them. I'm going to use them against you. Why? Not because they you. They'll never be you. But you don't want to listen. And if I got to do that to get you to come back, I'll do that, is what y'all say. And I don't care about how you feel about it. I will do that if, if that's what it takes to get you to come back. I will do that because if you don't come back, 
the lake of fire was created for the Yankees. But you gonna go. Oh, but you gonna go. And when he said, said these words, the Israelites departed and had great reasoning among themselves. Shaul spoke a word. That's it. We just need to plant a seed. What is the seed? We just need to plant a seed. What is that seed? Just plant a seed, man. Get somebody to go reason. We cannot do that if we're treating our people like they less than us and we know better than them and we better than them. You can't do that. To go plant that seed, you need to do it in love and joy and long suffering, which is patience for the wild and the and the ratchetness. You're gonna have to and you're gonna have to come up out your ivory tower too. Israel ain't coming to the ivory tower to holler at you. You're gonna have to go to the hood. I ain't gonna necessarily say the hood, but <laughs> You might have to go somewhere where they ratchet at. <laughs> that don't mean you go be ratchet, but go speak a word if the occasion presents itself. We got to stop hiding too. Now that also don't mean be all on the corner shouting and wilding. That ain't profitable either. That's the reason so many of our folks is like, I don't want to hear nothing about that. I'll be seeing them jokers overall. Whenever I see posts about that online, I always read the comments. And when you, I sent one to Shelly recently. It was some Negroes out in Oakland. It was IUIC. They all had on the purple suits and all that. And I'm not even sure what they was marching for, but it was a gang of them out in Oakland. They was just marching in the streets. They weren't even shouting people down. They was just out there, right? I can't even remember what exactly they were saying, but they weren't even like moving crazy. But because of how they have been, when I saw the post, the post had like a thousand comments on it. So me being who I am, I don't even worry about the video. I go to the comments of the post. Man, Israel, young Israelites who were ignorant, don't get it twisted, wasn't trying to hear nothing them Negroes was saying. Man, dude, them be over here talking wild, this and that. I don't feel them. I ain't hear nothing they say. They really corny. I know they was picking certain ones out the crowd. I'm from Oakland. That's such and such. He don't even take care of his kids. And, and I'm like, how are we supposed to reach Israel? And that's how people view us from the way we them being. Ain't nobody reasoning with you. I have yet to see a video yet of our people shouting people down on the corner where they was encouraging somebody or trying to inspire somebody or trying to speak hope to somebody and letting somebody know it's going to be okay. Let the elders know it's going to be okay. Somebody once asked me who knew I was into this. They was like, why is it that you see all these Israelites on the corner, but I ain't never seen them do like a food drive or nothing in the hood, try to do nothing to help nobody that's starving. And I ain't had no answer for them. I thought to myself, I ain't never seen them do one either. <laughs> And somebody may say to me, Andre, you ain't never did that. Now that I talk like this, but people who know me and Jolietta say, no, nah, them Negroes with dope money used to do that all the time. <laughs> oh, we was forever giving back turkeys like we was Frank Lucas or somebody. Go be somebody hope, man. Like Shaul, he didn't shout them folks down in Rome who was probably worshiping Jupiter and all that too. He went and let them know, look, this was the Torah saying, y'all know who we is. This is who we is. This is what we're supposed to be. And he planted a seed great enough to get them to go reason amongst each other, which is a seed. If you could get somebody to go reason over what you just said, that is a win. And Shaul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house. He wasn't nobody. He wasn't no prisoner. And received all that came in unto him. All. Israelite, whoever they brought. If you want to come here to Torah, that's what we read in here. It don't matter who come. We ain't turning nobody away. If you want to hear the Torah, humble yourself, know your place, but you could come here to Bible get read. And that's how it's got to be. Preaching the kingdom of Elohim. That's it. Hope. It's close. You that. You could be there. Tinker some things. You ain't going to change it all overnight. Tinker a few things. You got a good woman. Quit cheating on that woman, man. Go marry her. Y'all been together 10 years. Why you still out acting like that? You telling me she a good woman. What you waiting on? The grass is never greener. Take it from me. We think that. It ain't. You get right over there and be like, I should have stayed at home. What was I think? <laughs> Go be somebody hope, man. Go inspire somebody. I, I challenge every one of y'all, man. Go inspire somebody this week in Torah. I challenge every one of y'all that. And you don't owe me no testimony. Don't tell me when you do. 
Thank y'all when you did it. Preach the kingdom and teaching those things which concern about our master, Yahushua HaMashiach, with all confidence. You're going to battle the Jesus talk. Understand that. <laughs> Go inspire somebody still. And do it with all confidence. These are the signs of the believer. You are a believer. You got this in you. And no man will forbid you if you do this the right way. Hallelujah. That's the end of the Acts. I don't know about Acts 29 yet. I got to think about it, man. Shaul all in France somewhere. <laughs> the Sefer got Shaul preaching at the Eiffel Tower. I don't even know if it was built yet then. Was it built yet, Daniel? Man, it's the Sefer got Shaul out here. <laughs> Hey yo, go be somebody hope, man, and do it with all confidence. You got this, Mama Speed. Just be cool. You got this. You got this, Octidimus. You got this. You got this, you came, y'all. You got this. It's in you. He knew it was in you. He put it in you. That's why he called you to this moment. You got this. Tap into it. Shelly, you got this. You ain't got no choice but to have it, so you got to get up out of here. <laughs> Let me stop before you get hectic around here, man. Hey, we got this. We got this. We got this. Hallelujah. Any questions or comments about any of this before we go? <laughs> Hallelujah. Anything anybody want to add before we check up out of here? Hey, yo, you got this, Shelly. I'm telling you, if you didn't know, you got this. You got this. I promise you got this. Ariel got this. We go. We got this. We 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 go. It's go. We go. We can't spare the ride with Ariel. We still got to get some things together with her. But she got this though. Hallelujah. If it ain't nothing nobody want to add, we gonna pray out. Hallelujah. I, I talked about all these elders earlier. I'm going to let you pray us out, Obadiah, if you like to. Hallelujah. It's on you, Ock. Good read. Hallelujah. I pray you're encouraged. You got this, Obadiah. That's why you're seeing things happen around you. Daughters, y'all getting tighter with your daughter. I know you got some homies that you talk to her with, and, and you a you a great example. I remember the last, and and you are a great example. I remember I talked to you one day, and you was asking me like some things, like how can I do this and do that? You know, I try to speak to her, but I don't want to push him and turn him away. These, they, they, that's the right, that's the fruit of the spirit. You're trying to do this the right way. You're trying to do this to represent Yah, not ourselves. Those are the kind of conversations we have to have with each other. I think you are a great example. And to be an elder still thinking like that says a lot about you. Hallelujah. Yeah, I don't want to hurt anybody or make anybody feel small. I just want to uh, be able to help as much as I can, you know. Hallelujah. Uh, trying to do something from the heart. But Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to come together on this, the Sabbath day, we thank you for dwelling within this group to bring us together because you said where uh, two or more are gathered together in the uh, Ruach HaKadosh is here with us. And everything has come out to be very clear. It has enriched our minds. It has built up our boldness, our heart is stronger. We feel as though uh, we have been recharged that we can go out and if necessary, move, make some things move. Heavenly Father, we know that our main function is to spread the word about your love, your forgiveness, and the things that you can do for us, how much better our lives will be with you in it. And we do love you. We love you more and more every day because without you, 
we couldn't breathe, we couldn't think, we couldn't move, uh, we couldn't do anything. We can't do anything without you. Anything that's purple, uh, purposeful, I'll leave that word alone. We can't be of any good purpose without you because you are goodness, you are the truth. And that's what we wanna be about at all times is the truth. Now we part and we go to our own uh, room and we read our own uh, uh, Bibles. We say our own prayers because we are understanding that we pray, we pray unceasingly. So Heavenly Father, watch us while we're separated one from another and keep us blessed. In your name we pray. Hallelujah. 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 I'll go be somebody inspiration this week. That's the word of the week. We're going to inspire somebody. That's it. Go inspire somebody. And you can inspire somebody without even saying nothing to it. It may not even take a conversation. But go be somebody inspiration this week. That's what we got to be. Let's try to be. Be the salt. Be if you're a good pot of collard greens, everybody want to sit at the table. Exactly. Exactly. That's right. We, we got the flavor. We do. We do. And the salt. And the salt. Hallelujah. Everybody have a blessed day. It was good to talk to you all. Shabbat shalom. 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 Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Ag Daniel. Shelly called me saying Shalom to Ariel again and kind of act like she had attitude again. I, <laughs> I cannot get us. I can't see, get us. Wait, no, no. See, why is you over here telling these tales? Who had an attitude? I giggled. I giggled at you. Is that what it was? <laughs> it was a giggle. Boy, you saying Shalom <laughs> in here, I It's a battle. Don't let her tell you that. <laughs> oh, no. Why are you up here telling these tales? That's a Dude. shame, Shelly. Oh, I guess no. a battle in here saying Shalom. No, I'm fighting for my life to say Come that in here. Don't listen to this, on, man. Shelly. You're up here telling, telling tales <laughs> on the on the Shabbat. See, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. We're going to ask for forgiveness. Hallelujah. Y'all have a great day. Shalom. I'm waiting for the day when she uh, wake up good, on my Good to hear your Shalom. voice, I <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Good to hear you too, brother. Great message. I needed all that. Hallelujah.